Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new week and the Spirit of God is ready to give you words to walk with this week. Now listen, every day as these words come your way, they are impregnated with the anointing of God's Spirit. If you will let these words into your heart and let the Holy Spirit begin to guide you because see, the Spirit of God walks with His Word. See, now everywhere the Word of God comes, the Spirit of God is there. So when you receive the Word of God, what have you received? Not just mere words. You have received words, words that are pregnant and with the anointing to bring forth what He talks about. Praise God. So as you open your hearts to receive, the blessing of the Lord is resting on you. And that blessing, who is the Holy Ghost, will begin to move you in directions, provide the opportunities for you to express this word, and then the fulfillment of this word will come to pass in your life. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this new week. You are the God of all flesh. Nothing is too hard for you to do. Lord, we release our faith for the blessing to come on everyone watching and listening right now. And Lord, they will experience what we are talking about. Because the Bible says, they went forth preaching everywhere. The Lord was confirming their words with signs following. Signs are following these words even right now. As burdens are being removed, yokes, yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, last week, I was talking to you about something very, very important. Now, I wonder how many of you went back to, to study and check these things that I was talking about. But they were very important. And I was trying to lay a foundation last week. So, we're going to be continuing from there where we stopped i was talking to you about the prophecy of jeremiah and the prophecy of Joel being the same prophecy i remember i told you last week i said the reason the bible is still relevant till this day actually that is the main reason apart from being a book of history so we know where we're coming from as god's children you see it's a book of truth meaning everything you read in the bible is true it happened they were not stories they were not fairy tales no they were not most importantly why the bible is important and relevant today is because it contains unfulfilled prophecies Praise God. Yeah, it contains unfulfilled prophecies. So we use it as a, as a guide. You know, sometimes we make this mistake of thinking how we fulfill prophecies is when we try to fit ourselves into those prophecies and begin to behave in such a manner. No, prophecies are self-fulfilling. That's the truth. Prophecies are self-fulfilling. You know why? The one who spoke already saw the end from the beginning. So he is not speaking so that you will do something to make it come to pass. He spoke knowing that it has come to pass. Hallelujah. Do you understand? I said, he spoke knowing that it has come to pass. What kind of English is that? Yeah, but that's the truth. He spoke in the past tense. But you see, he is in the future. That's why many times God speaks. He speaks in past tense. Like for example, he will say, I have said. He said, I have given you. See, praise God. That, that, that's how he speaks. See, where, when did you give it to me? But that's why he said, I have given to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So prophecies are self-fulfilling. But you know what? When the season for the fulfillment of prophecy comes, God will raise the men that matter in that season. He will raise an altar of prayer. He will raise an altar of righteousness, where that thing is concerned, and then it shall be fulfilled. 
But sometimes you see people, they, they, they try to, they read about the prophecy and then they say, ah, we must fulfill that prophecy even now. And then they begin to work hard and begin to do stuff, begin to do everything and do everything. You will try everything you need to try. If the season for that fulfillment hasn't come, it will not work. It will do you good because it will cause you to walk in righteousness. Now, even that, remember the Bible says, for it is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, that's why as a child of God, one thing you must learn to do is learning to submit yourself to the workings of the Spirit of God. You say, how do you do that? I'll tell you as simple as possible. You don't struggle over the things of God. See, you know, you know, sometimes you, you tell yourself, man, you know what? I'm going to pray five hours today. I will pray five hours today concerning this, this matter. I will pray five hours today. Now you are willing to pray. And then you go and you start, oh, barakataya, in the name of Jesus. You pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And you'll be telling yourself, by now, I'm sure I've done one hour, 30 minutes. You know, and you pray and then you look at the time. You've only done 20 minutes. Oh, what? What? Now, you know what? That prayer, you're struggling to pray that prayer in the flesh. He said, but I'm speaking in tongues. Yes, you are not speaking in the Holy Ghost. You are speaking in tongues, yeah, but you are not speaking in the Holy Ghost. So what's the difference? I'll tell you. When you are speaking in the Holy Ghost, you don't use your energy. You, you don't use words that you know, even though in tongues. When you're speaking in the Holy Ghost, you just swimming and, and, and walking and speaking by faith and going. And I'm telling you, when you get into that realm, you won't be thinking in your mind, I'm sure by now I should have done one hour. I'm sure by now. You, you will just go on and go on and go on and enjoy it and enjoy it. And then by the time you are maybe, you know, at some point you calm down. When you calm down, you decide to open your eyes and you find a clock. Wait. Huh? It was not five minutes ago I started. How come? Two hours? That's what happens. Because when the Holy Ghost comes into the equation, you lose track of time. So when you find yourself, you, you tell yourself, I, I feel I should pray for one, five hours. If this thing will change if I pray for five. And then you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Then you realize, 30 minutes gone. Ah! You see, you are not doing that thing by the Holy Ghost. You know what you do? Two options. Either at that point, you begin to ask the Lord to help you. Or you quit that assignment. Because it wasn't given to you from God in the first place. See, you are the one desirous to do something. See? So if the Lord is not involved helping you, it will make no sense. You can end up praying, you know, by struggling. So, no, I said five hours. I'm not stopping here on the five hours. You may end up praying for that five hours and nothing will really change. But something good will happen to you. Discipline would have happened to you, which is good for the next level. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's not bad in all. But the mistake you will be making is to think after this five hours prayer that you struggled to do, that the situation will change. It is just possible that is not the way to the solution of that issue. Why am I saying this? When it comes to prophecy fulfillment, we don't struggle to fulfill prophecies. Why? Because prophecies are self-fulfilling. The one who spoke by himself knows exactly what to do to fulfill the prophecy. Something I always tell people, I say, listen, who, who prayed? Who, whose prayer did God hear when he decided he's going to send Jesus to come into the world and die for us? Whose prayer was he re responding to? Who, who did that prayer? Who was wise enough to think that someone has to die for our sins? Who was wise enough to think that thought and then brought the matter up to God? Who? Nobody. Nobody. The Bible says his own arm brought salvation. He did it himself. <laughs> he, he figured it out himself. And when he did, what did he do? When the season came, every player, you see, was moved into the field. 
Mary wasn't praying for a child. She wasn't praying, oh God, I want to give birth as a virgin. Lord, do a miracle for me. I want to give birth to a special child. No, she was doing her business. Not even ready for marriage yet, you know. Yeah, she wasn't ready for marriage. And then an angel visits her and says, hey, you are favored amongst women. You know what? You will conceive and bear a child. And you will call his name Jesus. And he shall be the savior. What? I'm not even married yet. How is this going to happen? Praise God. And then the angel told her what's going to happen. And, and, and she just said, what? If me, if it's me that I've been chosen, be it unto me according to your word. That that is what you owe the prophecy to be fulfilled. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary was chosen. Someone else couldn't have, maybe imagine Mary telling somebody that, you know, hey, guess what? I, have, I had a visitation yesterday and this is what the angel said. And that person said, wow. The other person goes home and begins to pray to, oh God, oh God, what you did to Mary, you must do to me. I receive that prophecy. I receive, I decide in the name of Jesus, I will fulfill that prophecy. Angel, I will fulfill that prophecy. Come and visit me. Come and visit me. I want to conceive like the angel told Mary. Imagine, no, no, think about it. Your prayer will not fulfill it. The Bible never told us Mary was a prayer warrior. I'm telling you this so we begin to look closely at this prophecy that Jeremiah prophesied. Now let's look at it and then we'll continue tomorrow. It says, but, verse, verse 33, chapter 31, book of Jeremiah. It says, but this is the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now look at verse 24. Verse 24 becomes the result of the prophecy. See, you will not see verse 23 happening. You won't see it. You, there will be no spectacular thing about it. No. But verse 24 is the expression of the workings of verse 23. So what happens in verse 24? It says, No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they all shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin. I will remember no more. Oh, did you see that? So when you see this prophecy, what are you looking out for? You are looking out for a season. That you, you walk up to somebody and say, hey, you know what? I, I, I was praying for you last night and I think the Lord sent me to you. He said, okay, sent you to you. You know, the Lord was telling me that and there's one business you want to do. And then you just go say, yeah, that I should hold on for three months before I do the business. Oh, oh, you know, yeah. In fact, what you just said now is a confirmation to me. Because two weeks ago, the Lord told me that I've been, I've been struggling with it because I think the opportunity may just pass me by. But you coming to tell me now is a confirmation. Say, oh, ah, that means God has, God has gone ahead and he has done. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, bless you, brother, bless you. You know, watch out for me because I'm going to obey God. I'll stay for that three months. And I'll postpone this, this startup for like three months. Say, yeah, yeah, I'll be praying along with you. Bless God. Amen. That's what he's talking about. Praise God. No, not the one say, I don't know, God, God spoke to me. And he said, mm, so what do, I, what do I need to do? Um, I don't know, this is the path God revealed to me. Or maybe we should go and see pastor. You know, pastor will now tell you. Maybe pastor will be able to explain it further. That's not what he's talking about. That's where we are today. Praise God. Yeah, when, when you need someone to interpret it for you. When you need someone to instruct you. Before you do what is right. He said in that day, nobody is going to tell you what to do. And how are you going to know it? By the Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, as, that's the result of uh, Jeremiah's prophecy. So, we are supposed to be looking forward to that day. How is that day going to come? Not because we say we have reached that day. No, 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 no. You see, the Spirit of God is working. It's for us to ask ourselves, where are we in these whole seasons of God? 
Praise God. And then the Spirit of God begins to guide us. You need to ask that question, where am I in the scheme of things? Where am I in God's season? And then the Spirit of God begins to unveil His truth to you. Praise God. We're going to continue from here tomorrow. Listen, don't miss any of this broadcast. And like our page on, on Facebook. You can subscribe for our YouTube channel and put on your notifications so that you'll be getting uh, notified whenever a new message is posted. God bless you. Go out today and shine. Go out today and come back with pastures. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye-bye.